Those are the spookiest of noises. <laughs> Very scary boy. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the podcast. We're doing the Halloween special, even though we're only three episodes in, we're already having specials for dinner. Woo! How are you guys doing? Hey. And uh, we're actually doing a bit of a first. Uh, we got the regular two boring dudes, and we got a, a third dude in. Welcome in. Hey, what's up? What's good? What's good? Um, so it's horror theme today, and we're going to talk about the spoops, you know, like the spooky stuff that go creeping in the night. And I figured, you know, the best place to start that out with would be, what do you, what, what do we find scary? What's Me that? personally? Yeah, like personally. What do you guys find um, to be the creepiest of creeps? Well, I, the way I see horror is um, very much like how I see comedy. Um, if you can sort of tease the punchline for as long as possible, Generally, the joke is funnier, you see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Normally, if you start out with a joke and you give the punchline like very early on, the joke sort of has very little or no impact. But right. when you sort of draw it out and sort of tease them and keep them hanging on, and then like finally at the end, you sort of chuck it in, mm. then even though people know it's coming, they've, you, 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 they've been sort of playing right into your hands. and one example i can sort of imagine is i'm trying to remember off the top of my dome um i think it was 1812 was it 1812 um there was a netflix film with uh about a stephen king novel where a guy murders his wife uh, for her land and you'd think that it would wind up to the murder but what happens is that she gets killed very early on like almost in the first act and hmm. the film is about the slow gut-wrenching guilt right oh oh and yeah yeah huh. this was like this was way back when um you know that we didn't have the kind of csi that we have now so you know a cop comes over to your house and kind of goes hey where's your wife and you kind of go don't know and they kind of go well, it works for me. Let's let's get out of here, fellas. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like that whole idea of like trying to hide the body or sort of keep you know people in the dark about it, um, he slowly loses his mind. So rather than having the horror film about the actual murder itself, um, they have this sort of whole kind of gut wrenching sort of build until you know like the ending sort of left open ended because at the end um spoiler alert um the uh the ghost of the people he uh, murdered um come to get him Ooh. finally oh spooky Myster it sounds more uh, very much mysterious it plays a lot into existential horror from the sound of it mm. yeah i i i guess so um I, I guess with a, a, you know, like a contrast and, uh, for example, what's another one? Saw. Yeah. I'm going to say Saw. I'm going to say yeah, Saw. Yeah. Um, Saw, it, uh, it sort of gives you a lot of the violence and the terror and what they try to sell as horror up front. You get that, like, right at the start, you know, like, it's not, like, it's not held out in any way. Like you kind of get that the whole time and it sort of shows a lack of, um, to me, it shows a lack of faith really, because they're kind of like, they're giving you all this sort of juice, but they're not really kind of like trying to entice you in any way. No, no. Uh, I, I think so is more of a showcase more, I think more like, uh, 
instead of focusing on providing horror, it's more probably like, yeah. oh, what, what are some cool slash horrific thing, way, things that yeah, way it's, you can it's talk It's more of a with. gross spectacle than anything else, yeah. to be honest. Same with Final Destination, actually. Oh, yeah. Final Destination is it's cool. I wouldn't say that it's horrifying, except for like it plays on maybe some phobia here on there that something you yeah, think yeah. might be dangerous might happen to you, but it's other than that it's pretty it's pretty just a spectacle than anything else cool ways to die cool ways to die yeah it's it's, it's literally it, that's literally <laughs> the the alternative title to the movie yeah uh another thing i I'm, I'm kind of curious about uh is more like how has horror like influenced your guys's childhoods um because i think most people have like a past with um horror movies uh, yep. You know, stuff that we found uh, scary when we were kids and how that uh, influenced our uh, tastes later on in life. Yeah. Hmm. That's, I'm going to have to think about that. Um, yeah. Uh, I, 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 I think I have some examples, actually. Uh, mostly Perfect. because, uh, well, my dad is a big sci-fi slash horror guy. Yeah. And uh, he, he brought me to a kind of, uh, what is it called? Uh kind of a museum exhibit where they had some uh, of the replicas slash uh, uh, statues from the alien, alien movies. Right. Uh, I was uh, around three years old when he brought me there. Hmm. And uh, I would say I was kind of traumatized. What, but a, the... what a responsible parent. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but... Uh, <laughs> Start him young. Know, to, to be fair, though, I, I had alien toys when I was young, so uh, I still liked them, but I was, mm. like, spooked when it came to the real ones. Not the real ones. Yeah, they, they wanted the movies because, you know, they were all <laughs> horror and shit, and not I, the I sort of envy toy you. versions. I really, I really do envy you with that. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll be the first to tell you I was a major, major, major pussy when I was young, I was scared of everything, <laughs> terrified. Oh, was yeah, because yeah, like uh, I remember, uh, I remember uh, that as a child. Um, I um, actually, you you go on. I think I interrupted you. Yeah, yeah, uh, because yeah. I was up because uh, uh, I only have vague memories of it because I was so young. Yeah. But the one thing I remember the most was that uh, I was scared. I I I was running away from the. I think it was some kind of wall that was. Uh, uh, showcasing the whole cocooning shit that was in the cut scene from the first movie. Ooh, yeah, that yeah, spicy. It was there, yeah. And uh, I I ran into one of the rooms, and there was a gi ginormous replica of the alien queen from the second movie there. And I was kind of a mix of fear and awe at the same time because it was <laughs> like super scary, but it was oh my god, it's so huge and majestic and and, and, and and plump. You got it. Eh, not really plump, but <laughs> got a bit of a hard on for it. Mm. I guess. <laughs> so yeah, that was kind of my first real memory where I was really scared. I guess. Like, uh, what I was gonna say earlier, I, I mentioned a bit of Resident Evil, but I think that's in the wrong order. I think the first time that media scared me for reals, um. It had to be Majora's Mask. Now, I I, uh, I, I know about Ocarina of Time uh, a long while before I got Majora's Mask. And, you know, I was kind of like, oh, mommy, please get me Ocarina of Time. And, you know, my mother being as analog as she was, not knowing mm -hmm. crap about video games, uh, she got me Majora's Mask. Oh. And... Uh, <laughs> and oh. And I remember that I could barely play the game because the mask transitions they were oh, just too yeah. much for a yeah. for a for a five year old kid it was too much. And on top of that, I I was friends with some older kids and they played Resident Evil a lot. Ooh. They played it all the time. And I remember every time I was at their place because it was a smaller town and you know you you just kind of hung around each other. And I, I I remember just standing in the hallway looking very, very far away as they were playing. I did not have the guts to sit down and, uh, you know, play with them. I just stood really far away looking in. Yeah. Trying yeah. not to look at it. Yeah. 
I actually have another memory of right now, which uh, uh, media especially, especially scared me. I was eight years old, and I got... Uh, and I remember it was my birthday, actually. I got hmm. some games, movies, and such, and one of the games were the game based on the P.T. Jackson King Kong movie. Okay. Uh, if you don't know, uh, it's a survival... Not really a horror game, but it's a survival-based game where you play through the hampers of the movie. It's mm-hmm. actually pretty decent for a movie license game, and uh, it has some uh, odd uh, circus around there and the shit. But uh, the thing that absolutely terrified me about the game were the giant centipedes that jumped mm. on you from behind. I've played the sound it. they make yep. still lingers in my mind sometimes. It's like, it's like an odd hissing sound with shittiness. Uh, What's it called? Uh, shit Clicks. Uh, Clicks. Like a Clicks. clicking noise? Yeah. 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 It's a mix of that. And like, ugh. And everyone I know who has played the game says the same. The game is actually, in my opinion, way ahead of its time. Yeah. It, it yeah. does not look like it's from 2005. Five. Yeah. Yeah, was, yeah. 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 It's crazy well made. And it's super weird, too. I remember, you know, like the indigenous people in the movie. Yeah, yeah. They were really like scary, like their makeup and their mannerisms, and they really made it look like it. They were um, like a people you would never be able to understand. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 they were almost paranormal in a sense because uh, they kind of were ghost-like sometimes in the movie. But uh, in the game, I don't really remember them being that much because I think they were only the one level. I bet they're um, like that in the movie too. I haven't seen that in a while, but I, I figured I would be. Do you guys? Um, sorry, I, I I just want to cut in here. Not do the you worst. guys remember the? Um, do you guys remember the movie by Eli Roth, uh, Green Inferno? Uh, I haven't seen that one. I have not seen it. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I I, I know uh, it's it's a um, it's a film about these sort of uh, Amazon kind of tribal tribal people. Oh yeah, the uh, the cannibals. Yeah. Yeah, the cannibals, mm. and it, it, they looked very much like the uh, people that we're talking about now, the uh, Skull Island natives. Inhabitants, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, and it's kind of interesting, that kind of fear, because they, they, you know, they, they're wearing bones, they're wearing teeth, presumably from people that they've sort of conquered and killed, and I think there's something that's very visceral about being eaten you know it's mm. it's uh, it kind of shows a lot of there's a lot of primal instincts in fear yeah exactly it's a it's a primal eaten. fear or well, particularly from other people you know because yeah it just sort of go, kind of goes against a lot of natural instincts so i think when you have characters that you know are people and they're dehumanized a little bit and they're sort of wearing human bones that kind of i think for a few people triggers a lot of um you know like i was just saying primal fear yeah yeah definitely uh because it it gives you kind of like an uncanny valley feel that they're your fellow man so they're your friend but also they're a predator and you're the prey sort of yeah yeah so it's something that you're kind of familiar with but with a kind of an unnatural twist Mm, yeah for sure and i i guess that might be the reason why well for example in king kong while why they kind of look so scary it might also be the body paint because they have like a an ashen color to them sort of Mm. You can't really tell their ethnicity as well, but I, I reckon it's like Caribbean sort of kind of, <laughs> kind of deal yeah, kind of. going on. Well, they they filmed a lot of that in uh, New Zealand, so mm. um, oh, yeah. So a lot of people, a few people that I knew personally, they actually were extras on that, and oh, know, okay, from hmm. all different walks. I mean, all they really had to sort of fit was kind of like a very sort of wide aesthetic you know like there, there were all types of people um employed to be the okay. Skull Island natives hmm. yeah interesting you i know, th- yeah throw on a bit of ashen body paint and some of that sort of scarring that you sort of have you know that, that sort of tattoo type scarring type thing where you sort of have the raised edges and wait you know, uh i'm a bit lost uh, are we talking about we the inferno steel or talking about the king kong oh so i'm talking about king kong uh, which one? Uh, P.T. Jackson's or the new one? 
Oh, oh, right. No, there is a new one. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Them. yeah. Sorry, sorry. I'm talking about the Peter Jackson one. The, yeah, yeah. The yeah. New... I, I yeah, yeah, so. yes, yeah. The new one wasn't very scary for me. No, all. no, it's 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 just, it's an action action uh, adventure movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even though it's a monster movie by definition. Yeah. And it's a kaiju uh, movie. The American yeah, kaiju verse. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm sure we'll get to films in just a moment, but um just to sort of give my uh, sort of take on um horror and games, I was fairly I'll admit I was fairly sheltered with um horror games until I was uh, much older. Um one of the first horror games that I recall playing was um uh Fear. The, the Oh mm. yes, 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 oh god. Yeah, and I just remember climbing a ladder somewhere and it's dark and as soon as i reach the top of the ladder there's this person just standing there and then they disappear into ash oh, like, oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Not, definitely not today <laughs> <laughs> yeah no yeah. fear is a great horror game uh in the sense that it takes a lot of inspiration from um well you know classical horror movies you know the ring for example yeah. that's a big influence and it's so strange how they mesh it with pure action shooting. It is it is yeah. a weird mix. Bullet time. Mm. Definitely. Yeah, because I remember when uh, I was around... Uh, wait, which year did uh, Fear come out? 2005, maybe? 2006? I think I have been... I was 9 or 10. I remember my dad was playing Fear on his computer. Mm. And... Uh, I remember I was sometimes too scared to even look at the screen sometimes because it was like, <laughs> yeah, because because you know when when some of the spooky stuff was happening, it was like flimmering the HUD and shit, and like, oh no, spooky stuff could happen. I have to run away. Ah! <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally, totally. Yeah, yeah, I get it. I get it. It it is so strange now though because I I sort of really 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 love that kind of aesthetic with horror now. Uh, yeah. I, I, I like it when um, I like a lot more adult themes uh, but uh, but if you asked me when I was young I would have been like oh no 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 you know no 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 not, no. not at all keep that shit away from me <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so it's it's weird how times change you know it's crazy uh, and it's I, I guess it comes with maturity and because I didn't experience a lot of it when I was a child, now I sort of um, adore it. You know, I kind of want to catch up with myself, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Like, definitely. Um, one thing that I've we sort of uh, touched base with again was vampires. Me and Speedweed uh, had a look at a few vampire things uh recently uh even during halloween but we also looked at a another show before yeah. before halloween and it it is an it is an anime it is very bog standard anime but it is also one of the fucking coolest things and like really interesting plots that i've seen in a while uh it's called shiki hmm and um i don't really know how to break it down but it it, it is essentially your um like a bog standard vampire story vampires move in people go missing in the night however what makes it interesting is that there's not really a protagonist per se uh they it's a very sort of gray show yeah, because uh, it's kind of like the, the whole village in itself uh, is the whole cast, and all of them are protagonists. In their so, own right. Uh, yeah, yeah. So there isn't uh, a single main main character, if you say so. No, I, I wouldn't say that. No, uh, I'd say that they all have their own goals and such, and sort of as they're progressing with their arcs, uh, they sort of bump into each other along the way, yeah, yeah. and it all kind of culminates in the end. And I'm really happy to see that kind of show when they kind of follow the mantra of everybody's their own hero in their own story. And it's not really about virtue and morals. It's just kind of who they are and that's what they do. 
because we a lot mm. of it, a lot of it is um, basically good versus evil these days, especially in horror for sure. Yeah, and the the whole shift this show does to, during the latter half is like it has become a whole other show actually. Oh, you mean um, in the the mid season? Yeah, 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 yeah. When yeah, yeah. Uh, the focus shifts fully and the kind of puts everything into perspective. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, another um, sort of vampire thing that we did see is I'll actually ask you this right now. Uh, do you know about the book "Let the Right One In"? You know what? This is actually I, I actually am familiar with this, and it's probably I dare say one of the few vampire films that I've seen that actually scared me. Um, Which one did you were, see? For their, well, I saw this. I saw the Swedish one, the original, because yeah. then there was the remake yeah, of yeah. Chloe Moretz, and I'm like, "What's this bullshit?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. Oh fuck! I was sure. about to see that too. Jesus. Well, yeah. No, it's just like it just because it's it's part of this sort of weird line of Americans sort of being like, "Hey, let's take these Euro films that Western audiences haven't heard of. Let's put a Western take in it because." That's what it needs. And just <laughs> release it. And, is it Western uh, enough? Well, they, <laughs> I don't know. What, what do they want? They, yeah. Just, yeah, you know, because I, I, uh, no. at least when it comes to, you know, uh, when they do American remakes of Japanese or Korean movies, it's like, well, we're westernizing it. But if you're going to westernize another Western movie, it's like, yeah. why? One thing that the Americanese are really guilty of <laughs> is fucking castrating the thing and that's not a pun of what i'm about to say that's just kind of that just kind of slipped out but if you look at movies like old boy for example they, oh, they yeah. remove the twist from the movie you know um like the point the point of the twist they stump it they cut it off it's it's dumb and the same thing is in the let, let the right one in um it's a 10 year old movie so i think we're good with spoilers However, th there's a there's a character in the movie that is castrated, like literally, it's a hermaphrodite, and mm. that's not in the American version, from what I understand. They don't bring it up; they sort of like put it away, even though it's a relevant plot point in the original, which kind of makes me feel a little bit like, why why would you remove that? Uh, what, what's the Too point? Too spooky, I guess. Ooh. Ooh, yeah, 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 but it it does really, really, really make make it less of a punch, doesn't it? Yeah. Hmm. And yeah, it, it's, it's uh, to thing. be fair, though, uh, the movie itself, uh, based on the book, uh, if you talk about the Swedish version, it doesn't really state uh, clearly what the vampire is. You you kind of almost have to read the book in order to get the whole picture. Yeah, they omit yeah, a few scenes. Just... It's kind of a point where it's like by now you should just know what a what a vampire is and mm. if you don't know what it is that kind of confusion sort of makes it even more scary yeah. because like i think one of the scariest parts about it is that you do have this young girl and she's very innocent and she's young just like you know the protagonist Mm. And then there's kind of like this point in the film where you realize that this thing that you've been used to seeing for like the whole film is actually something completely different and something that you wouldn't normally expect in, in the sense that she's actually a lot older. Mm. Yeah. Like, mu like much older. Yeah. And she has yeah. a very youthful demeanor too, which is super, super creepy when you think about it after yeah. you've seen it after the fact. Yeah. Um, I think you know. Here's how I think that the the whole conversation went leading up to the uh, remake. They're sitting around the uh, the idea, the you know, the boardroom, and the producers are like, oh, "So how about that Chloe Moretz character? I think we only have a couple of years to sort of squeeze out of her before she sort of turns into that kind of <laughs> obscurity of child stars. Um, <laughs> what could we throw her into? Oh shit! I know this one. I like the right one, and I saw that at a at a film festival one time. You know, um, <laughs> my, uh, my 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 daughter uh, knows that film. She, it's 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 quite lovely. Let's uh, let's let's do that. I can't control myself in front of her friends. Let's do it. 
<laughs> well, <laughs> well, I know. Yeah, sounds about right. Stereotype. Definitely. However, yeah, I re- you get it though. Yeah, I do. I I also read like a super super interesting theory uh, regarding the movie, though it's sort of obvious. But at the same time, I find it interesting in the way that you know the whole childhood childhood the whole um child demeanor that the vampire has in the movie yeah uh a lot of people think that she's actually grooming the protagonist to be her supplier of food and that's why um they become romantically involved for example right yeah so she's hoping that he will uh, grow up to become like a serial killer and give her victims to feed on like the old man that takes care of her from the beginning yeah hmm. and that is you know i i wouldn't say i'd want a sequel to that there is a sequel to it in book form but it would have been it would have been super cool if they made a post credit scene you know if those were popular as they were now as they are now i mean uh it would have definitely added to it i think Oh shoot! You know what? I just remembered. Um, didn't they do the same thing in Helsing? Helsing, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, which um, version of it? Uh, uh, the the um, je- uh, sorry, I'm thinking of the Japanese version. Um, uh, do you mean the original or the ultimate? I haven't seen Ultimate. I only. Oh, seen, oh okay, uh, yeah, original. because uh, the first show was uh, done before the manga was uh, finished, so it was half of the show was, uh, I think, uh, non-canon. Because well, it's sorry, it's been a while for me, so maybe I'm not re- remembering the points too well. But I do recall there was this um, vampire in the film. There was this young girl, and she was sort of dressed in white, and she was very old. Uh, that actually rings a bell, even though I actually haven't seen the show. Yeah, I'm very, I'm verifying that there at the moment. Uh, I wonder. Um, I, I, I like that concept. Do you even have a, a little bit of that in Shiki? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's hard to it's hard to sort of pull off though to to have uh, you know an actor that's that young but can still have this sort of bearing of someone that's sort of been around, you know, like this sort of unspoken maturity mm, yeah yeah for sure for sure it's because I, I tell you what man like uh, you know like i've been in you know productions and stuff where you know we've had to work with kids and it's it's actually really difficult to get kids to be grown up go figure yeah. um, <laughs> but yeah no it's so to actually have that is a, a really kind of good thing it's just it's a really tough sell hmm Ah, oh, thank you, Wiki. It's given me all the characters. Fantastic. I won't hang on it too much, but if I if I think of the character, I'll let you know. Okay. Yeah, fair enough. Speaking of children, there's another show. Okay, I I, I I'm I'm gonna tell you right now. It's Mecha. It's fucking robots it's fighting. Show. Yeah, it's a mech show. But it involves kids, so we're sort of on topic anyway. <laughs> Um, <laughs> it's this is a kind of a show I don't want to spoil because even though the show is old, it's like is it ten years? Uh, wait, I shall look it up. Yeah, it's somewhat around like ten years old by now. Uh, the manga is from two thousand and three, and the anime is from two thousand and nine. So okay. it is. So it is actually nine years old. Nine, nine years. All right. Fair enough. And it's essentially about a bunch of kids that pilot a robot. I think there's like 15 of them, maybe. 15. Yeah, 15. Yeah, 15. And essentially, they also act as the robot's battery. So it's sort of like a Russian roulette thing that every battle, one of the kids will die. And, you know, despite how that sounds, it's not a lot about the robot. The plot is more or less more focused on um, the kids and their lives and how they feel and how they relate. 
uh, knowing that they're going to die, and like how they how they handle their final moments before they have to fight the big baddie, uh, and just, then die, and then die. Uh, even Gellion? No, th it's not it. It does sound like it, doesn't it? But it it's not the same show. It's called it's called Bukurano. or uninstall if um, you uh, want to be a gaijin. Pedantic. Yeah, pedantic. A pedantic gaijin. Uh, yeah. So these, um, sorry, hang on, because I haven't heard of this before. This, um, you've got kids who are being used as sort of like a life source for like a bigger machine. Yes. Yes. Essentially, it sounds a lot. It sounds a lot like Warhammer Forty K. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh God! It it, it actually does. Oh it? Jesus! It sounds a lot oh, like um, a certain a certain movie about a train. Oh shoot, Snowpiercer! Yeah, I haven't seen that one yet. So please don't spoil. I'll be I'll be a good boy and don't spoil it for you. But oh, thank you. You better watch it. Okay. Yeah, no one. It, no it, it is. not a. It's not really a topic for um like what we're talking about. But when you guys have the chance, look up. There's a and then a really like very thorough analysis of why Snowpiercer is. It's a sequel, sequel to Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. I listened to it and I watched the whole thing and I'm like, well, I don't know enough about this to refute what you're saying, so I'll accept it. <laughs> well, uh, well, funny thing though, uh, I think we actually brought it up in the last podcast because I saw that thumbnail in my YouTube feed. I was like, left my ass off because it sounds so. I think we did. I think we did bring it up last yeah. time on the podcast. Uh, it sounds really familiar to me. But yeah, 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 definitely fucking Snowpiercer. It has one of the one of the my favorite scenes in it too. Uh, you know, you, you gotta watch it, Speedweed. It, I definitely recommend it. Actually, sorry, like the, um, Willy Wonka is kind of like a funny sort of segue. Um, I actually remember Willy Wonka being one of the first films that actually frightened me. To be honest, like that nightmare tunnel, like geez, oh, so oh crazy. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like the thing is, is that you, you go back and you sort of read the notes on the production of um, of Willy Wonka and what's his name? Oh boy, I'm uh, uh, Gene Wilder. Gene Wilder, yeah. Gene Wilder was the only one that had a clue on what anything was going on. A lot of the uh, other actors, they were experiencing stuff for the first time. Oh, so okay. They didn't, they didn't know the scene was coming and the <laughs> reactions that you sort of see where you got like all these sort of weird images thrown throughout the tunnel and just like... <laughs> yeah, because uh, <laughs> is it, it, isn't there like a, like a clip of uh, someone shopping ahead of a chicken and shit there? Yeah, no, there is, and like a, a like a dead guy with a, a snake going across his face, and you're thinking, oh. "Yo, what the hell?" <laughs> oh god! And and and, and like every, the whole song like takes a break there, like some kind of satanic monologue right in the middle of it, like the yeah, gates of hell are always showing. Way, yeah. He's I... just like, you no, know, nobody said I couldn't sing this, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. <laughs> Oh God! Oof. Though I wonder, I, I haven't actually read the book, so I don't know if how much of that is actually from the book. Uh, Ronald Dahl was like a children's author. So... Yeah, yeah, and uh, I've I heard that he he usually puts some morbid stuff in his books because uh, why not? Sometimes. Yeah. Well, um, contain your surprise when I say I have neither seen nor read uh, uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Oh, that's okay. There's, uh, you know, there's the book, and then there's the movie, and then there's the sort of, you know, piece of shit that came after the Johnny Depp yeah. one. Oh, uh, no oh, that piece of shit! I, I thought you meant the other piece of shit, uh, Tom and Jerry and Charlie and Chocolate Factory. I had never heard of that. What the fuck is that? <laughs> There's like, it is like the most cynical piece of shit movie that's ever been done. But the only good thing about it is that it it recreates the the original movie, everything. I mean, everything about it, and just adds Tom and Jerry. Among with some hellish uh, face grabs made for <laughs> funny reaction on the internet. Fresh. Bullshit, really? Yeah, it kind of, for example, uh, they do the whole uh, tunnel scene with it, word for word. But they, but, but they just, just don't show the imagery, but they just scream instead. 
it, it, okay, it, somehow it is somehow more horrible than, than the original. I, imagine spending the resources. Oh, let's make Charlie and Chocolate Factory and throw in Tom and Jerry. Yeah, throw in them in yeah. there as well. Like quote it verbatim. <laughs> Just throw in yeah. Tom and Jerry. It's great. Oh. It's fucking trash. It sounds like trash if you ask me, to oh, be honest. God. Yeah, it, it, it is pure trash, but it's, it's like <laughs> it's, it's like a train wreck. You just can't look away from it. Oh, goodness me. I've, I've got to, I've actually got to take take the steering wheel. I am currently holding the steering wheel and I'll, I'll be like uh, turning this ship around because fuck me, we're going to talk about Charlie and a fucking chocolate factory for, yes. the, for the rest of the podcast. Well, uh, no, no, nobody, nobody explained where the uh, Oompa Loompas really went. I mean, I'm just saying. They're, they're in the snow pizza. No, I, 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 I thought knows. that was obvious. No, everyone knows yeah. that the Oompa Loompas are actually half breeds between angels and humans. They're the Nephilim. Ooh. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Just like that, I am letting Carl take the steering wheel. <laughs> now, I, I, I really do want to talk about a movie that... Uh, it is one of my favorite movies because it is a, quite an original idea of horror. Uh, I don't know. I think I've tried um, uh, getting all two of you to watch it i know speed we'd seen it with me i never know if i managed to get you to see it with me perfect blue does that ring we a bell? never got we never got a chance to see it but i did a little digging and i i know the film i just i haven't actually like watched it now it is super interesting of a movie in the way that it portrays the horror of expectations rather mm. than anything conventional there's a monster in it sort of and it just kind of tackles uh the whole like oh you know <laughs> i want to do this but nobody wants me to do this and i can't be myself and i have to be someone else for everybody else and it just kind of devolves into this really mental stuff yeah, the whole theme of the movie is uh, identity, specifically. Definitely. Yeah. And one of the coolest things uh, that I sort of read about it, now I'm probably going to have someone be like, oh, chemicals, that is bullshit. I looked it up and it fucking isn't true. But I like to believe that it is, that uh, they actually paid a lot of money in other movies to steal one scene from Perfect Blue. <laughs> yeah i don't know which movie i think it's requiem for a dream uh there's like a scene where they someone puts their head in like the bathtub water and starts screaming and apparently sounds like requiem yeah it might it might be actually uh, they offered like the perfect blue creator a lot of money just to get the rights to make a scene just like it fair enough i guess <laughs> there's something there's something about like the way Japanese construct their horror. Yeah, yeah. Mm. That it affects people on a psychological level and Western audience, Western um, producers just can't, can't do it, not like how Japanese can. Mm. I, and I, I sort of thought about this, like why, why the Japanese can sort of affect uh, I kind of think it's because uh, right now in the West we just have a big fad about uh, jump scare horror constantly, while in the East uh, they kind of kept their kind of horror and it kind of evolved from there instead. Hmm. Because we've had really scary movies before. We had like The Exorcist, Alien, and other movies, but they weren't just jump scare fests. Would you say that the Japanese are tired of bombastic horror? <laughs> yeah, well, I would. No, there's There's a nuclear I joke in there. Yeah, no, I, 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 I saw, yeah, bomb, bombastic, yeah, that's good. Oh, wow, they kind of flew <laughs> over my head. Almost flew under the radar, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, wait, that was an intense. Twice! <laughs> yeah, anyway, um, so, sorry, I actually was having, a, I actually had a point to that. Um, oh, so, oh, sorry. So, sorry, like, because, like, I was, 
I was asking the question why they uh, do uh, horror in like a psychological way because it's so it's unique the way they do it. Mm. And you go back to like older aspects of Japanese culture, and you look at like ink art, for example, Japanese ink art. Mm. And one of the things about Japanese ink art is you have a very minimalist look, but it's set up to imply a lot more. You know. Mm. Yep. Yeah. So you have these, uh, you have these ink blots that look like trees, and then next to them, are very like faded ink blots that kind of look like trees as well. And the way it just sort of sits on the page, you kind of assume what's behind that. So you have this uh, kind of weird look of trees in the foreground trees kind of in the midground and you just assume that there's more trees in the background you mm, know? Mm. oh yeah yeah and the, that kind of idea of implying things i think is all throughout um a lot of japanese culture so it when you consider that it's sort of unsurprising that when they go to do horror it affects you psychologically because you just sort of tell a little part of the story and then you let people assume the rest and the more they sort of think about that the crazier they get mm, mm. Well, at least that's just how i sort of see it at the moment yeah it basically lets your imagination um fill in the blanks a bit like not really japanese but it it does follow that principle like the babadook ah yes because you you never really see it do you Sort of, no. but not really. Well, none have lived to tell the tale. That's true. I have to be honest, I've seen the Babadook, but my love for it is only, it only takes in shape of the meme. <laughs> Why could you just be normal? Re you sure you're not just... <laughs> You're sure you're not just talking about some alcoholic guy in your apartment that sort of gets up at like two in the morning to like scream at the at his, at his cats or something? <laughs> Actually, <laughs> it was <laughs> oh, me, me, me and little Speedy had a, had a talk about that the other day, and I, I I hope you're you're caught up with a little little bit of JoJo at least. In that we we firmly believe that every horror monster or poltergeist entity in every horror movie ever is actually a stand user. It makes sense. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I, I, yes, yes. Why not? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, for example, uh, the Barber Duke. That's a stand, <laughs> and the little kid is like the stand user. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and. Um, and speaking of that, we we also watched the movie Mirrors recently, which is essentially oh. a stand movie. Yeah, yeah, the whole thing Mirrors. is like is like a stand. The whole thing is, about, the whole... Are you talking about the one where there's that woman in the bathtub and she just gets her jaw ripped open? Yes, yes, that's the one. That's right. Oh jeez, oh that, that movie film. is gross. Yeah. Oh yes. Um, you know, like, uh, sorry, I want to circle back to something. Um, mm -hmm. you know, we're talking, you're talking about, um, like things like the Babadook, you know, the, these sort of s scary figures that have sort of been passed down through legend and firsthand, like, 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 sto like storytelling. Mm. It's kind of interesting how, cause you got to wonder how those things start. Like, could the legends that we see now these sort of horrific boogeymen just evolve from you know like it's late you're walking home from wherever and you see someone sort of standing in the distance and just the particular way that they're standing and uh, you know you're you're drunk so you're not really sort of seeing things straight but you sort of see this sort of person standing in poor lighting next to some other stuff and it just sort of gives them the shape of this sort of unnatural uh, creature. And then, you know, you sort of tell a story of this thing you thought you saw and it sort of just sort of devolve, you know, sort of evolves from there. Yeah. Mm. You know, like do, how many, convers how many uh, characters kind of come from very sort of loose 
happenstances. I yeah no, it's it's an interesting thought. I've had something akin to it. Yeah. Um, back in back in in my teenage years when I probably would have needed glasses, I was walking to meet up with a friend. Uh, mm. And it's super late at night. It's like maybe three a.m. in the morning, and I remember that I'm like walking up this hill, and I can see like super, super, super far away. Um, there is like a vague shape of a girl, and she's like standing in the streetlights on the middle of the road. There's not a lot of cars where I lived back then, and she kind of turns around to like look at me i'm i'm meeting with a, with a guy by the way so um it wasn't supposed to be her that i was supposed to meet and she kind of just stares at me for like a good a good while <laughs> like mm. really like standing frozen looking at me and there's a good distance between us like a very long distance so she stands completely still for a very long time looking and it's not until i come up close you know to recognize facial details and such that uh, that probably wasn't the case but for a, a good maybe 30 seconds i was like what the fuck is going on yeah so you probably wouldn't have thought that if you're in the dark and like if you are in the dark. How do you know what you thought you saw was real? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, you you let your imagination run wild, especially mm. in the dark. Which is yeah, it's hmm? that's kind of interesting. Interesting because, uh, for example, if you are in your room and it's all black with no lighting or anything. If you, you 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 can almost see something at the corner of your eye, but if you focus on it and look at it, there's nothing there. Mm. It's something with uh, how our eyes actually take in light and then uh, refract it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So some 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 of these blanks that we we can't see become some kind of filler in our brains that we can perceive as something else. Yeah. That's, like for example, um, if you put a a blue car under an orange street light in the middle of the night, what color is it? Something completely different, but at the same time... Well, it, 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 you, you know it's a blue car. Yeah, but... yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah, yeah exactly. I, was gonna, I was gonna say, we, still, we can still interpret it as blue. Yeah. Yeah. That kind of reminds me of a documentary I saw a while ago called The Nightmare on Netflix. Mm -hmm. That's about sleep paralysis. Ooh. Everybody's yeah, because, favorite subject. Yeah. Uh, uh, the thing is that uh, an interesting element that uh, comes up uh, with this is that uh, they ask people all around the world about what they were seeing during th these sessions. And uh, depending on what culture and country they live in, they're also different things. Mm -hmm. mm. For example, uh, in America, they were pretty common to see tall men with uh, completely no facial features, all black, with hats sometimes, mm -hmm. aliens, and that. But if you go into countries such as Ireland and parts of Eastern uh, Europe, they were always seeing some kind of a... a what are they called in English again? It's like... Uh, no, ban not banshees. Uh, but that too. But uh, it's, it's like a, it's like a spirit that uh, holds onto your chest and kind of, kind of, tries to suffocate you while you're asleep. Uh, a mare, I think it's called. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know, I know what you mean. Yeah, that and also, uh, witches slash uh, hags are also very common in these countries to see during these paralysis. Ooh. So, what do you think would be in the Scandinavian countries, since they have a, oh. their, their their version of uh, the siren is called the uh, I don't really the know ne Nekian. the yeah. Nekian. yeah, which is uh, like wait, the nude. Wait, like, I I'm just gonna take one of these books here and look it up just to be sure. Yeah, so it's essentially huh. a naked guy playing the violin, and then when people come to watch him play, he drags them into the ocean and drowns them. 
Uh, we will probably see. A, Everybody's uh, a critic. <laughs> For sure, he's had a had a rough life. The good old. Uh, I think a bit that will kind of fit our pathology will be a guest, a droger, or maybe a botchling. If you know what that is. Oh yeah, the Witcher Three botchling. has taught me a lot. Yeah, a botchling is basically the spirit of a dead, born, or aborted child that has not been bur- buried properly. Mm. Kind of really morbid shit. Uh, we also have the Night Raven. Uh, Do you mean the Valraven? No, uh, not Raven. Not Raven, okay. Uh, Valraven, that's from Nor- North mythology. The Not Raven is like. Uh, He's like kind of a ghost raven that he said if you can if you look up at it uh, when it's flying over you you can see its uh, whole skeleton and muscle structure and then you will uh, die because it's it's an omen of death. Oh, uh, we also have a kind of funny being here called uh, Gluson. Gluson. It's basically it, it's a fire breathing pig. That's that's can't yeah. can't say I find that scary, but I'm sure if I saw yeah it, yeah exactly that's the thing like co- conceptually it's like it's like really lame, but I bet you if you saw that running towards you at night you would like shit your pants probably I think I think anything on fire running at me at any time of the day I'd be like <laughs> you know what I got something to, something to do literally anywhere else <laughs> yeah <laughs> at well, high speed very high speed. Very high speeds, accelerating at the speed of light, away from this shit. A, yeah, uh, um, a Sonic covered in flames running towards you. You're already dead. Probably. I wouldn't be able to outrun Sonic. He's the greatest You're too slow! There is. <laughs> He's the best there ever is. There's nobody better than Sonic. Ha <laughs> ha. Well, you know, all, you do is, all you need to do is lay down a spike strip and then he's sort of toast, right? It's true. Yeah. That's or, uh, just literally anything lumpy. <laughs> I'd probably Lumpy. pull down my pants and bend over, and as soon as he's like, "You're too slow," I'm gonna be like, or, "Gotta fuck you know, my ass." Like, or you know, bend, well, bend, bend, bend over backwards because you know you got like small lumps either way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm joking. Um, it's kind of interesting with these sort of characters that sort of people see in um, sleep paralysis. I have two comments on that. Um, the first one is um, the you hear real time testimonies of people who uh, have been on the operating table, and for whatever reason, the anesthesia didn't oh. work, but the muscle paralysis mm. uh, did work, and so they've been uh, awake during the whole operation. They just couldn't move, mm. and they describe their experiences afterwards. Like that's that's freaky because like you hear that and you just sort of you immediately put yourself in that situation and just the thought alone is terrifying. Yeah. But um, the other thing is, you know, with these sort of sleep per, uh, sort of things and people have these visitations, you, you, you are right. There are things that are different, you know, give, you know, give or take a few sort of variables in whichever culture that is. But um you also have the kind of collections of what is the same, like what do these characters have in common? And, and I sort mm. of read this one time where, you know, generally the characters are pale. Yes. Um, you know, thin and with sort of, what was it? Uh, I'm trying to remember this. It was shrunken eyes and um, teeth. Like there was something about their teeth. Very like like uh, hmm. were the gums receding or something maybe something something like that it was very sort of unnatural and it was an image that people from different cultures who don't know each other all kind of described more or less to be the same sort of thing and the the question that they were sort of proposing in this sort of article which I can barely remember myself is. Um, what is it about this image that everybody seems to sort of recognize on a sort of very sort of primal level? Like, what is it about this idea that really sort of stands out to us? Yeah. Uh, 
uh, going by that description, I think it's uh, really the manifestation of our fear of malnourishment, disease, and death in general. That's manifesting. Yeah, yeah, I get that. That that's a very yeah. No, I I I, I agree to that. Yeah, yeah, because because all that uh, shit that they're describing is like it's a symptom of a dead or a person with a really bad disease, and uh, and as an instinct, we kind of have to go away from them and not be infected, for example. Mm, mm. Yeah, I think I think it might be like a common thing because. Let's be real. People, people dying uh, is something that everybody could agree on. Looks the same in um, every culture. Yeah. And you know, there there are some things that are universal to everybody. Spears, for example, putting a a pointy thing at a at a long stick, that is very much mm. consistent across cultures. Um, for some reason, but it's because it is more indicative of being human i guess rather than um culturally specific yeah oh and also speaking about the kind of uh cultural imagery and stuff uh, i read somewhere that uh, there's a theory that uh, our myths and legends about hominids uh, hominid people living uh, in the forests and uh, you know uh, Bigfoot and what we have here in Sweden about our trolls and that stuff. Yeah. It's actually some kind of uh, culture, very primitive, prehistoric cultural memory of when we humans were not the only human species alive. Hmm. Wait, wait, wait. wait. So do you mean like fucking werewolves and vampires and shit is a Neanderthal or like a memory? Of uh, no, uh, like, like ogres and trolls and stuff like that. It's like a genetic memory of when uh, Neanderthals and Homo habilis and all that other species were alive and it kind of uh, an instinct that kind of jumps in at us and like we hallucinate about them instead. Hmm. Strap into right. the animus. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, it kind of as it's created like genetic memory theory, you know, but <laughs> it, it's still interesting like it's, though. So it's like a, like it's a hereditary kind of... Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, hmm. I get you. It's interesting. It's an interesting. Um, it's an interesting concept to be sure. Though, uh, though I can't really imagine a Neanderthal becoming a fairy or something. But no, 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 for sure. <laughs> but maybe perhaps the the Hobbit humans that they found on the island of Java. I think. Yeah, yeah, Is that they're good. They're good pick. Yeah, and uh, especially I think uh, they were a kind of humanoid living in Russia a long time ago. I think it was the Homo denisovians. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they were one of the species that we bred with in order to create Homo sapiens that we know right now. Uh, they were also a pretty big uh, factor in when they lived in Europe and uh, West Asia. Mm-hmm. It's interesting too because I've always um, it's always interesting if you uh, think about uh, Christianity and stuff like that. Um, I've always found it super interesting in how they interpret uh you know like fossils and stuff you know like oh the, yeah yeah the greeks saw the skull of an elephant elephant and they're like hmm maybe there's cyclops this, yeah cyclops there's a big guy with a fucking eye roaming around <laughs> and i wonder if like christianity had anything like that um, yeah i wonder uh well yeah i think it's because uh, in poland there is a place called uh, the devil's footsteps mm. and what they found there was actually like fossilized footsteps of dinosaurs during the Jurassic period. Yeah, and they thought it was Satan mm. or something. Yeah, exactly. Hmm. Well, like, um, there's a. Uh, I think it. I personally, I think it was horrifying when I when I heard it. Um, you you are familiar with King Herod, right? No, you'll have to um, no. explain that uh, to me. Well, King Herod, he was the guy in the Bible when he knew that. Um, Jesus was sort of on his way. He kind of ordered the um, wholesale murder of um, of yeah of, of oh. boys and, and mm. infant boys. Like he was not a particularly, well, at least he, he was depicted to be a very unpleasant person in the Bible. He was very he was he was the antagonist, if you like, in the situation, and. Um, he uh it, it, the story was that god 
um, sent, uh, it caused him to be eaten from the inside out by worms. Oh, Sexy. okay. Yeah, yeah, like that was <laughs> that was terrible. But like, I'm not 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 diminishing that at all because like sometimes you like there are things in in the Bible that you sort of look at and kind of go, oh, well, gee, that's a bit ruthless. Um, it could also be considered that by their perception, it could also be just simply an intestinal disease. Yeah. You yeah, know. definitely. So so there are things that, you know, you sort of have by old accounts and because of their lack of knowledge or medical development and the way they sort of believe it happened, it kind of turns into this thing that seems to be quite um, horrifying. So, you know, maybe you know, like him getting eaten from the inside out by worms, you almost just imagine him standing there one day and then collapses and all of a sudden worms burst out. Like that's probably, it's probably more likely to say that, you know, the guy just got sick one day and died. And then they found worms afterwards, probably or something like that. Yeah. Or maybe he was being eaten by parasites. Yep. I love that. I haven't had breakfast yet. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. We're in different time zones for this one. Yeah. Yep. Actually, I, I, I know which one you were talking about. It's just that where we're from, we call him King Herodes. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, that's why we, I kind of didn't pick up on who he was. Uh, speaking of the Bible uh, and sort of getting back to the media of it all, uh, have you caught up with uh, Castlevania Season 2 yet? Uh, no, no, I haven't. Um I, I'll be honest, I uh, haven't um, renewed my uh, Netflix uh, subscription, but um, I have been meaning to find a way of uh, watching uh, the show. It's, yeah. it's good. I'll, I'll toss in a recommendation uh, right there. I was sort yeah. of worried. I was kind of worried about the, um, you know, when it was nearing its end of the season. I was kind of worried that it was Where's gonna... it going to go? No, I was kind of like, is this it? Are we are we gonna stop yeah. right here? Um, but you'll be happy to know that uh, Speedweed found out that they're making a season three. Yes, currently in development. Though I think it's quite early, so I, I won't get in the hopes of uh, a release before twenty twenty. I think, sadly. Oh hmm. goodness me! Yeah, but you know I can. Oh sorry. No. Uh, go on. I was going to say, like, it's Netflix. You can practically count on these dudes to expand the franchise as much as possible. Yeah. Whether, yeah, it, they... it's, whether it is to the detriment of the show or not, that's the question. They they, they, they do keep their words on this stuff. Uh, I, uh, I I particularly like Netflix. They, they've never really done anything controversial, so to speak, except the whole advertisement thing for other Netflix shows, which... I don't have a big problem with, to be honest. Mm. Well, just... the one problem I would have is that uh, the licensing deals in uh, our part of the world is kind of shitty sometimes because I remember when they when they started, it started, kind of had boondocks on them, mm. and now it, it isn't there anymore. I guess it's kind of be licensed or shit, but still, it's like. They they never expand because it's like they just uh, replace them instead. Yeah, it, it's weird how they do it periodically for some reason. Yeah, it's super strange. In fact, yeah, but, though yeah. Uh, though it, it, it's, it's nothing compared to Crunchyroll, where like uh, the licensing deals here in uh, Europe is kind of fucked because they can have like uh, shows. I was actually look now they they have Bukurano on Crunchyroll, yeah, but not for us in Europe. Okay. Yeah, it's a US only. That's weird. But yeah. on the other hand, you know, they do, they do have uh, the whole like, NTSC PAL region kind of thing going on. But still. It's still, it's the internet. We'll, yeah. We'll, we'll be all right. <laughs> uh, I don't think pe people really care that much about it, to be honest. Um, but bringing you back to uh, Castlevania, I am super happy that a show like like it is being made it 
was really interesting this time around uh and i think the focus they went with it was super good interesting even um <clears throat> i wasn't quite ready for it um the way the way where they took it um I'm all, I was also pleasantly surprised to know that uh, Peter Stormare is in it. Yeah, oh, he was so good in it, oh my god. Yeah, I loved it, it was great. Uh, I'm using an accent on it, but do, do you know who I'm talking about? <laughs> Me? Yes. Uh, no, I, not, not particularly. Um, no, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, prison Break? I didn't see Prison Break. Ooh, wait, wait, um... uh, John Wick, the second one. <sighs> Describe it again. Uh, Peter Stormare. That's. A... I'm gonna look that up because I'm good at. Uh... Yeah, you'll 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 know it when you see him. Um, he oh would, wait, he was in. On. He's the he's the guy in Until Dawn, the psychologist. Oh, this guy. Uh, yes. You mean the uh, European villain and just about... Yes, yes, it's yes. him, yeah. The Russian oh, monster. <laughs> this guy. He played Satan in uh, Constantine. He, he, yeah, yeah. and he was, he was awesome in it. It's like the best mm. part of the movie. Yes, it is. I haven't, for sure. I haven't seen Constantine. Uh, it's it's alright. It, it, it is not the comics, but... Much. Oh, okay, fair enough. You YouTube, YouTube a clip of um him of you know like his, his sort of being a Satan. Of... Satan. Yeah. It's like the only few minutes of the movie that are like entertaining. Ah, oh, that sucks. Uh, well, they 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 made a lot of changes because like first of all, like they decided, hey, let's let's take this image of Constantine, let's make him not British. Um, <laughs> yeah, and then, and then yeah. it just sort of unraveled from there. And that's making Keanu Reeves. <laughs> yeah, it's it's super strange. In in many aspects, the animated DC movies are doing much better than the live action adaptations. Case in point, fucking Suicide Squad. Yeah, the Suicide Squad animated film was like spectacular. I I, I loved. Yeah, it. yeah, it was great. And then. And then, for, oh, no, we can't turn this into a like crap on Suicide Squad thing. But the the gripe that I'll leave anybody with is like they could not make up their minds about the uh, soundtrack. It's like, hey, let's do classical, uh, let's let's do classic rock because you know that was a thing in uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. And then, hey, let's suddenly switch to rap music. And oh let's, yeah, let's make um, the Joker a a, a, a gangster. Oh yeah, that's true. Was, yeah, and was... uh, yeah, and uh, and let's make Joker actually love Harley Quinn and not make it uh, uh, the whole abusive, abusive relationship, relationship so, like, yeah, it, like it's, it's supposed cool. to be for fuck's sake. Yeah, like there's just so much potential for like the Joker alone to be a frightening character. Like he yeah. he, he he can be scary. Yes, definitely. And there's I'd... so many Batman villains that can be scary. I mean, like um. Scarecrow. <laughs> yeah. Scarecrow is the, the one that, mo that most people go to, and yeah. I mean, they freaking nailed him in the games. Mm. Like, honestly. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yes. He's so freaking good but, like, in both uh, Asylum and Night. Yeah. Definitely. A ca character that I'd like to sort of see developed a bit more, um, particularly in that sort of gritty sort of reality, is um, Toymaker. Yeah, Toymaker. Oh, yeah. Yes. Maybe Man Bat. He, uh, <laughs> not, not not an award-winning name, but you know he, he can be scary. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, keep, yeah. They do. Yeah, in something. in a creature feature movie, but uh, yeah. another thing I would like to see is Professor Pig in a movie. Mm. I'm oh, coming yes. for you, bat. Coming to make you perfect. The weirdest thing though is that Professor Pig was actually, Professor Pig was actually in an animated Batman show, and he was kind of dressed like a Victorian. Uh... Oh. Yeah, the, the thing with the show was that the whole the whole the whole uh, the whole thing was that they had Batman villains that were not mainstream. It's like, oh, that's a great idea actually to just showcase some new villains. But the thing is that in order to have Professor Pig in the show, they had to neuter him extremely much, mm. like. He was an eco-terrorist instead of an insane uh, sur surgeon. 
yeah that that was a shame about his portrayal in it but yeah i very much enjoyed their alternate take on batman in that uh what was it called Be- beware the batman yeah 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 it was a, an interesting take on it albeit a little bit edge lordy yeah he, he, kind of, he, he was kind of a uh, like no nonsense always ha- duty on job he for example they kind of tease that fact that he never eats anything he just drinks all this food <laughs> <laughs> Though uh, uh, one character actually really liked friendship, it was actually Alfred because he was like uh, alien forty-seven. <laughs> yes, he's, yeah, he, he's fucking alien hitman. 40- that, that, that that's that's the his only shtick. He's hitman. And uh, the thing that Katana was uh, a psychic was a good idea, but they kind of just made it very generic. Yeah. No, I, I don't. I actually don't remember Katana that much from the show, no. which is a shame. Definitely. Um, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna call this right here, and um, I guess it's my turn to take the steering wheel. Um, yes. For a second, but um, I think like we should probably pull this back towards uh, horror. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Even though there are you know aspects of Batman that can be horrible. Mm. Um. <sighs> One of the things. Wait, you know, uh, there's actually the one thing I that's still Batman related that is kind of horror related is that uh, I actually did a uh, new playthrough of Arkham Asylum again. All right. Mm. Yeah, and and, th- and I forgot that how much horror imagery is in that game actually. Hmm. What about the, it? Yeah, uh, like uh, for example, the, uh, the whole aesthetics of the mental asylum is very Lovecraftian if you. Think about it because, oh. for example, uh, Arkham Asylum is actually a Lovecraft reference in itself because the name Arkham Asylum is from one of Lovecraft's books. That's true. You're right. Yes. Yeah. And, 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 and I, haven't read, I haven't read the books, I'm afraid. And uh, it's like it's one of the major locations in, uh, I think, uh, it was The Shadow Over Innsmouth where the main character uh, hangs himself while he's instituted in, into it. Yeah, but the, yeah, but the, the whole game it's uh, for example one of the side things you can do is it collect memories from uh, the founder of the whole thing who did it during the eighteen hundreds and uh, all these uh, explanations and description of things is very very kind of Lovecraftian in its nature. On, on top of that, they have made a Batman Lovecraft spinoff. Yes, which I have. I have a copy of it right at home. Ooh. It's it's. It's quite a good. It's quite all right. Um, if not a little bit depressing, as yeah. Lovecraft should be, of course. Also, a uh, note: when I say Lovecraft, I don't mean cosmic horror shit right here. I'm talking like, you know, the architecture, mat- architecture, the the thing about the brain versus matter and all that shit. Yeah, That's... yeah, yeah. No, no, totally, totally. Yeah. You also have fish people, or sorry, a fish people. <laughs> Yeah, Killer Croc isn't really a fish, but he he eats fish and people. He's in the water, and therefore he's a fish. They have dolphins. Mm. It's like the killer whales and the balloon. It's, it's, it's like the capybaras. They are also fish. Sort of. They, you you could make a case against that. <laughs> Constantly submerged them in water, and what are they if not fish? We're all fish when we drown. True. It's a it's a it's a known fact. Read the Bible. What were you gonna? <laughs> where were you gonna steer this into? I was gonna like it wasn't even gonna be a gentle segue, but I was gonna say let's talk about Conjuring. Ooh, yes, I've seen it. You've seen it. Uh, Speedwood hasn't. Nope. So I'm a virgin here. Yeah. Did you watch it recently? Me. Yes. Yeah, I, I did. Um, it's been a while, um, but I guess given the spirit of the season, I uh, decided to watch it again. And um, it's kind of interesting, some of the because uh, it plays off a lot of the classic elements of the what's the word the the poltergeist kind of um, uh, storyline of um, well, first of all. I don't know. I, do you mind if I uh, speed wagon? Do you mind if I uh, just sort of? I won't discuss like the ending. I I, I won't do that. Sure, like, sure. Uh, I don't mind. Cool. Um, 
first of all, a spirit comes into the house, and when you sort of watch the film, you sort of realize that had they not done the Ouija thing right at the beginning, or, or let alone bring that thing into the house, they probably wouldn't have had any trouble at all. And that sort of seems to suggest that a lot of these spirits that are referenced um, for the most part are invited, you know? Yeah. Like they're not a problem until the humans involved create a problem, you know? And that, that's, that's kind of interesting to sort of uh, to, to, to look at. And um <sighs> Carl, you want to come in uh, on this here? Like, like, how how did you feel about that? Um, sorry about about their basement, or what would you say? Sorry. Well, um, I'm not, I'm not talking, sorry. I, um, in the in the film, there's um two, uh, what do you, well, I guess what would you call them? Um, not priests necessarily, but they work for the church. They kind of expose paranormal supernatural- investigators. Paranormal investigators, yeah, two paranormal paranormal investigators um, respond to a um, potential possession poltergeist sort of situation in yeah. uh, what was it? Was it England? No, it wasn't England, but it's um, it's very much like Europe. Maine. Oh, do you mean? Are we still talking about the first Conjuring, or do you do you mean? Um... Oh shoot! Sorry, sorry, I'm talking about the second Conjuring. You're talking I'm an about idiot. the second um, one. I haven't seen the second one. Oh, okay. Well, um, I, well, I guess that sort of puts 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 us at a stalemate because I haven't seen the first one. But um, with uh, with with what I saw, it it kind of well, that's great. Um, <laughs> uh, I I got nothing. I'm afraid. <laughs> that's all right <laughs> oh. uh but but it, it is it is a very like interesting kind of show in that it it is it is good there's i can't say that there's anything special about it but it is good as in you know it's decent it's a good it's a good watch if you see if you see it um and i, I do like the whole paranormal investigation aspect of it too um using these two paranormal investigators you can actually do quite a lot with it Mm, because the um it's almost episodic really because it's kind of about their adventures so they go and they they solve a mystery and then in the second film they go and solve another mystery and the world kind of expands from there you know it's scooby-doo yeah we just need like a big great dane talking and there we go we're finished <laughs> yeah we need like a really really cutesy sidekick and we, we got it maybe that annabelle doll could fill in the shoes of that oh jeez. <laughs> okay i will say what i what I, what I will say about um the conjuring 2 and maybe they have this in the first film i'm not quite sure mm. but they at the end of the conjuring 2 they, they 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 have this object which is supposed to be representative of the spirit that was occupying the house and mm. it's maybe it's trapped in there I, I guess i don't know right but like they take it back to their house in america and then they go into their basement where and i'm only explaining this for the uh, for the listeners but they, they take this object into their basement where the basement is just full of all these sort of objects that they've collected over the years from different um hauntings and, mm. and such and he finds this nice sort of spot on the uh, on the shelf and he puts it there and he positions it just right so that it's going to look nice when he kind of goes back into the, the dungeon and um in, in this sort of background you see you sort of see the annabelle doll um behind uh, glass and under no circumstances should you ever open this and i'm thinking what is it with white people in doing really stupid shit in horror movies? <laughs> it's true. It's true. Because it's just like, burn it. Bury it like Jumanji. I don't care. Just that thing is not going in the house. It's got not going near the house. If it shares the same postcode as my house, it is not far enough away from my place. No, like, 
it's it, it's almost like bringing in like explosives into your living room and they're like oh it's just it's gonna be there we're not gonna do anything yeah. with it don't touch it though it's dangerous <laughs> it yeah. might kill you all right now uh timmy i'm gonna leave my uh 305 on the nightstand just uh just make sure you don't 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 touch it or anything i mean oh what gun safe nah 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 i'm just gonna leave it here you know in case i need it <laughs> like it it it, it I, I think i said this to you yesterday but it's sort of like the scp foundation leaving all of their um their little paradoxes in the backyard just like running loose and like ah it's all right jeez can you imagine an <laughs> scp yard sale <laughs> <laughs> Come so, 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 what, so, so, what it, so what is this thing oh that oh that's really interesting that is a hand mirror um i it's we i can't i can't recall exactly where we got it from but um if you look in the back like over your shoulder you'll see like a hooded figure i don't know exactly who it is but like if you look away and then look back they'll be immediately right behind you and that's when they snap your neck he's a nice fellow so we we you know we keep him around he's a good guy yeah no yeah. we're taking cash for it of course um so yeah, a lot of, is it, there's, a, there's a lot of buyers, but um, you know pe people tend to give it give it away. Sort of, it's a very yeah. very um, used item. I'd, I'd like actually, to. Uh, and they just kind of disappear when uh, when they sell it. Like, whoa, where did it go away? Huh? You know, sorry, I just was. I just remembered something that we were sort of talking about a second ago. You know how I was sort of like saying burying stuff like Jumanji. Yeah. Yeah it's not to say that it was a meat like 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 sh shit your pants scary but like there was something about the first jumanji film that really spooked me like it, i think that like the gym like the, this considering the idea of making a board game scary really sort of spooked me a bit because like you got this you got the drums that mm. sort of just yeah yeah following you and like you can't place where it's coming from and it's 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 about to get you and then you see it and then it's a board game and you're like oh okay that's not so scary and then like a freaking tiger jumps out and eats you and you're like oh well didn't see that correction coming. it's a lion actually oh sorry sorry <laughs> it's what in a, africa uh, what a terrible <laughs> what a what a terrible mistake yeah yeah Awful. only the death what? only the death penalty is enough for that what a, what a what a what an inconsistency in Jumanji. <laughs> <laughs> oh guys, don't you don't you remember remember when the fucking killer whale jumped after the board game and killed everyone? That was my favorite scene. Oh wow. wait, 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 wait. That reminded me of uh, another film that I actually thought was really uh scary. Um the uh did you guys ever see The Walrus? No, but I've heard about it. Uh, okay. don't, don't, don't you mean Tusk? Tusk, Tusk, yeah, that's the yeah, one. Yeah, that one, yeah. You've seen it? Uh, no, I, I do I see the trailer and I kind of... Uh, and it kind of... I, 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 I was kind of freaked out alone by the trailer, to be frank. Mm. Yeah. Well, I, I've seen it. It sort of seemed to follow on the back of, um, of the human centipede, of that kind of really sort of bizarre kind of surgical... Terrible body horror, yeah. Mm. But it's it's also kind of like a bit funny. Like it's not meant to be humorous, but like they know it's going to come across as humorous, so they like yeah. pretend that that was their idea all along. Yeah. yeah. Um, but like, there's this guy who's sort of imprisoned and then surgically altered to look like a uh, a walrus, and then he ultimately ends up. Um, Killing the scientist, thus completing the cycle and becoming a uh, complete um, walrus, and it was just so freaking stupid. And they had to know that's how it was gonna look at the end. But at the same time, it does seem to sort of be insightful in the way that it kind of goes back to that whole Mary Shelley type thing mm. of um, the creation killing the creator. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like Frankenstein. Uh, uh, do you know the origins of that movie, how we came to be? 
I, uh, no, no, I don't. Uh, funny thing, it was actually from uh, Kevin Smith's own podcast where he was reading up weird Craigslist ads. And one of them was a copy pasta that was about a guy wanting, wanted to be reconstructed as a walrus. <laughs> Craig. So he just decided to make a movie based on a copy pasta. Rogue, rogue, plastic surgery. <laughs> of course, Craigslist. Fuck it out. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Wow, Craigslist, who knew? Craigslist is great. That's where I like. Uh, was... What's next step? Make a freaking uh, copy pasta movie based on the Navy Seals one. Definitely. I want to. So I wanna... Michael Michael Bay gets the rights to that. Don't yes. 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 No, nobody nobody does pro military like uh, like Michael Bay. Just handed him the copy paster and <laughs> let Steven Seagal sort of <laughs> play the lead. What would it be yeah, then? No, 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 the, no, 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 the, no. Would the John be... Cena is. Navy SEAL! Would, would the plot literally be like some six-year-old kid is like, poopy on the guy's Facebook, and then he like, literally tries to fuck yes. him up? Yes! <laughs> he like, constantly has to watch his back for like, a laser pointer. <laughs> <laughs> um, like, oh, I, I watch it. I watch it too. It actually sounds just, hilarious. Just, just, just a really sort of, really short comment before we sort of move away from John Cena. Why didn't they have him as the Vanisher instead of Brad Pitt in Deadpool Two? Ooh, that would have been actually. It would have made so much. It would have made so much sense. It actually. I would guess have, it would have been pretty I funny. Get, I guess hey, the Fox. The uh, ex- we can't see him. I, I guess the Fox executives ex- executives were not up to date with the memes at the time, but yeah, you they you know when a meme becomes reality, it's usually <laughs> way after it's dead. Yeah, it's because just long production cycles. Yeah, that's pretty much it, to be honest. It's yeah. a shame, but it's true. Uh, but the John Cena meme, it, 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 it's pretty much dead as well. It got a nice funeral. Um, you know, you know, like the rule of memes, right? Like if uh, the creator or subject of a meme references him or herself, then you declare the meme officially dead at that point. Yeah, it's gone full full cycle. Yeah, right. Because so, it's hard to tell a a, a joke that's uh, self aware. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, and, and that's, that's thing... actually a great opportunity. Sorry, that's a great opportunity to sort of get, circle back to something that I said right at the start. Okay. Was, yeah. You know the association of uh, comedy and horror. Yep. Yes. And um, if you guys remember, I think it, it was Leslie Nielsen from the uh, Naked Gun. Uh, series. Uh, have you guys seen that? Yeah. You guys know who that is? Yeah. Uh, Leslie yeah, Nielsen yeah. said one time that, um, like, practically, if you if you become aware of the joke or the actor appears that he is aware, he is, he is self aware of the joke that he is telling, the comedy falls flat, you know? Mm. It's like you have that uncle who tells the same fucking joke at every cookout. <laughs> You know, it's like he knows it's funny. He wants you to find it funny. And that is exactly why it's not funny, you know? Yeah, there has to be like an element of surprise to a good joke. Precisely. Um, uh, And timing. And that is exactly why I think a lot of horrors can fall flat is because, you know, the people that are making it desperately want you to find it horrifying. Mm-hmm. So they do a lot of these things, and I think that stems from where jump scares have become such a big thing. I heard it described once as kind of, kind of like a comedian going through a bar, tickling people and going, ha-ha, you, you laugh, technically I'm funny. Oh, that's, yeah, That's yeah. true. It's pretty pretty good point, actually. Um, but, you know, yeah, I, I wish kind of horror would um, attempt to do something different it wouldn't hurt them to take a page out of the, you know, like the Japanese horror thing and make it a bit more existential and psychological as well. Yeah. Because when you tell, uh, when you tell a story, people are still going to draw their own, um, conclusions. You know, like people are still, people are still going to assume things no matter what you tell them because they're, going to interpret it 
from their point of view anyway that's something you can't control like you create something and then you release it and that is your part of the transaction finished now mm. the audience gets a sort of make up how they see it yeah yeah, and yeah that's why that's why a lot of franchises are carried by the fans because they're the ones who continue imagining it and keeping that that whole vision uh, alive so if you're gonna make a horror movie you gotta like tell enough of the story that people are gonna make up the rest of it and then it sort of gets carried on its on its own it's why you know the old classic horrors are still being talked about because mm. they've had that kind of profound effect early on and it's sort of lasted ever since yeah like the mummy werewolf werewolf is like a huge thing these days and it, it kind of keeps living yeah. on in different forms for sure yeah yeah and it was it, it was for sure it would have been scary at the time but i think one of the things that's probably lost on hollywood at the moment is taking these films that people are already know about and turning them into action films mm, yeah definitely yeah. like i said with werewolves they're turning more into um they, they've sort of like taken a, a, a step to it in another direction and they've sort of become what's called urban fantasy uh, these days. And then yeah. nowadays, <laughs> it's more or less an outlet for a very distressed teen to feel like, ooh, it's a special society away from everybody else who is normal, and I feel at home here. It's a very common theme uh, when it comes to werewolf media these days. Someone feels left yeah. out, and the werewolves are like, "Ah, oh, we'll offer you a good place of home," and th that's essentially like the entire thing. Hmm. Why haven't they made uh, a show about skinwalkers being a motorcycle gang yet? <laughs> Would that be freaking amazing? To be fair, sons of ghouls. No, sounds of uh, uh, sounds of uh, something wolfy shit. <laughs> Son, sons of Uwu. No, are... no. Sons, not go there. sons of Nussling. Oh, what's this? We, um, in in uh, in New Zealand, we uh, we have a um, we have a, we have a series called uh, What We Do in the Shadows, and it's oh uh, like, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a black it's a black comedy on uh, uh, vampires in our yeah, capital uh... city, and um, they had a feature of um of werewolves that they sort of have this sort of weird uh, rivalry with. And they're actually, I hear that they're making uh, like a sequel to that where it's going to be called Werewolves. Two words. Oh. As if nice. to say, we are wolves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, but isn't uh, Taika Waititi going to do that one too? Or... I, I don't know the capacity that he'll be involved in. But, because um, uh, what I read about him is that he he's currently making a movie called Yo Yo Rabbit, which is about a little boy who has an Im Im imaginary friend that is Hitler if he was Maori. Yeah, um, I'm gonna hold my reservations about that. And yeah, it's like I really see. weird. Yeah, and I he's and he's going to play Hitler in the movie. So yeah. Personally, I I try to be very um, careful about how I approach the idea of finding Hitler funny. You know, mm. is that sort of thing. I, I and I, someone might say that either it's all okay or none of it's okay. I think that in certain cases that uh, that, that actually isn't true. There are some things that shouldn't be considered funny or rather in a certain way they can't um okay in this example we we're, we're talking about hitler i couldn't find hitler funny in a context where it's kind of overlooking what he did or turning him into a sort of a clown type character an instance where i found hitler funny was in wolfenstein 2 Oh yeah, yeah. When they're when he's like a decrepit old man doing weird shit. Yeah, but he's still like a, an absolute psychopath, you know. Yeah. Um, 
I, that I, it was humorous, but at the same time, it was sort of uneasy and sickening. And any kind of humor in that was incidental. It wasn't. They weren't trying to make him a funny guy. They just knew that it would sort of come across that way because he's old and he's senile and you sort of get to sort of it's more ridicule the, him rather than make a joke. It's more on the characters around him, to be honest, how they react to his antics. you got the guy who's like, no, Mr. Hitler, I'm from Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> like, that, that kind of stuff. But that's not really Hitler being funny. That's the guy being funny. Yeah. It's funny that, that line between horror and comedy, you know? Yeah, I, I think... Um... I personally would like to say that I, I am I am personally very much for that. Uh, either all of it's okay or none of it's okay. I'm a big proponent of that. But I, I think um, I, 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 you know, I do have a feel on what is tasteful and what isn't. And when people go like, ha ha, poo poo pee pee, a lot of people died. And with with no point to it, uh i you know i i'd personally say that it isn't funny uh unless it's like yeah. ultra super duper ridiculous then yes yeah, maybe yeah. yeah uh is yes me or the voice kind of sound uh, really metallic and weird Ooh. i think you have a bad connection this is uh this is the part when the creepy pasta sets in oh no not again <laughs> it's it's time boys it's just uh the spooky hours, so to speak. But yes, uh, it, there is um, there's a little bit of metallic coming out of you. I sort of hear it a little bit. Yeah, it kind of it sounds like a lot from my end here. Uh, ah, I can see right. if everything else on the internet is no, everything else on the internet is kind of lonely fast. Yeah. So I guess it's something about Discord. Then. Yeah, it's the it's it. I like I said, it's the spooky hour. It's uh, oh, time to get spooky. Oh, bad internet connection! <laughs> <laughs> it's the end uh, of our existence! Well, maybe... Just, just, hmm? just as we've been talking, um, there's this character, there's this person on Discord who's... Um, he's hit me up in the DMs, uh, calling me Anya, and almost immediately brings up the subject of, um, like, do I have a boyfriend? Yeah. I'm kind of like... Well, no, but I don't like where this is going. Um, <laughs> do you know? Uh, well, you know. Perhaps it might be a good time to round it off right about now with all the metallic voices and stuff before the the entire thing just comes crashing down and, you know, we'll, we'll just be a, a couple of geezers not being able to hear one another. Yeah, likewise. Die, die by our own hand. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's been it's been a um a lovely time during this episode. Shall we at least shall we at least uh, conclude this? You know, like do a do a recap or something. Absolutely, I think we have enough time for that. Yeah, for sure. Uh, horror is spoopy, and spoopy is horror. Very spoopy. And, Whoa, that's spoopy. I and, could not have put that there myself. And now it is time for all of us to go to the loo to make poopy. Oh, you too? Okay. Yeah. I'll come with you. That's this. <laughs> All right. I mean, okay. Yeah. Sweet, sweet yeah. ass. Thank yeah. you for uh, thank you for hopping on. It's our first guest appearance. It was a good time. I, absolutely. I, I, I really enjoyed I really enjoyed the... Um, I wouldn't say the horrors are things that I sort of see all the live long day, but I do enjoy uh, a decent horror on occasion just f mm. for the the way it makes you feel and um how we were saying uh the, the structure where it can kind of sort of imply enough that you get drawn in you know yeah, i think yeah. that's what a good story does so um i look forward to maybe doing it for a different genre one day perhaps definitely definitely all right cool sweet well uh, i'll see you around guys yeah. See Take ya. care and thank you for uh, watching us and have a good night.